Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health, I'd like to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring, in brief format, tools for wellness that will benefit both our colleagues and our community at large. Today, along with my colleague Tim Michaels, we're going to focus on mindfulness at home. And so, Tim, we have a special guest today, Jeff Nelder. Can you in introduce Jeff for us? Well, Jeff Nelder has been working with Trinity Health of New England uh, probably since last November. He partnered with us around a leadership event, then during our 61-day challenge, and then it's just morphed into a great uh, professional and friendly relationship. And Jeff's been piloting some things with our nurses and nurse leaders around mindfulness. But I really invited Jeff because he trusts me enough to tell me about his two sons. And then as we were doing, and I'm going to let Jeff talk in a minute, as we've been doing some surveys recently, we're hearing from some staff about some of the things they need. Before I do that, I want to give Jeff a chance to say hi to us. Hi, everybody. Really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Tim. Thanks, Kathleen. It's our pleasure. So one of the things that we had heard is we were doing little mini wellness surveys, and we were asking staff just for today, what parts of their life need some attention? And we gave them some choices. And then the second important question was, how do you want to receive help? Do you want a phone app? Do you want a live session? Do you want a one-on-one? -on -one? We just wanted something simple um, that was easy for them to do, that would make them feel like we're listening um, and giving us some feedback. But we gave them a chance to write a comment. And one of them was really vulnerable and brave and said that they felt that the workload was high, which we've known, but also that the working from home, especially for single moms, um, working from home, their kids are at home trying to homeschool. They're either in the same room or a different part of the house trying to do their work for Trinity Health of New England, watch the kids doing homework, and then do all the other motherly roles as well as external family roles. And it really became clear that we weren't doing enough to support people who are working remotely, um, which is really why I thought of talking with the two of you. Um, you are both professionals. You've had a long-term commitment to meditation and mindfulness. In addition to, um, Jeff, I know you run a marketing company. Kathy, you ran your own family practice. Then we're part of an integrated medicine practice, then handled COVID. And now you're launching a regional service in two states. So I guess the basic question is, as moms and dads working in a uh, pandemic and social unrest, in addition to everything that was going well or not so well in your life before, um, what has mindfulness looked like for you during the last 14 months? Uh, so Jeff, well, you want to kick us off? Do I kick us off? Uh, you know, I, I always come back to this concept of uh, making things workable. Right, it's, you know, mindfulness isn't about uh, eliminating your thoughts. It's not about, it's certainly not about eliminating your emotions. It's actually about recognizing the way things are and developing this wise relationship to things as they are, which means that you're always gonna have emotions. You're always gonna have thoughts and feelings and sensations. And, uh, and, and it's so important to be it peace in some way. So uh, what I've noticed is that, you know, in my life, resistance has always created the greatest suffering for me and for the people around me. And you can almost see it happening. You know, when, when, uh, when you can feel somebody getting angry, you can feel them resisting something, resisting a realization or resisting, you know, the way things are here or resisting, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, they need to do this or this needs to happen in the world. And, uh, I think the first important thing is to realize that, you know, uh, no one's, no one's, no one's able to get away from life without it leaving a mark, without having some sort of pain. And that pain isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a signal, right? And if we respond to that signal in the right way, if we're holding our hand over a, over a fire by accident, and we respond to that signal and pull our hand away, that's not resisting the flames. That's developing a wise relationship the flames. And so, you know, during, during the past, you know, 12, 14, 15 months, as, uh, as we've experienced so much volatility, whether that's, and this is all, I've experienced all of this in my life, 
whether it's whether it's emotional or physical you know you know maybe maybe you've gotten sick and you don't like you, you know you you don't take care of yourself necessarily in the same way because of what's available during this situation uh mm -hmm. whether it's financial you know things have been way you know at least in where where i said things have been way you know way tougher right and it's not just it's not just the business development itself it's also finding a wise relationship with you know how we have to work you know what's what's the professional way to represent yourself when you're sitting at home you know maybe you have a dining room table you know where you can sit maybe you don't even have an office so you know whatever whatever the the challenge is the important thing is to recognize that this is how it is and and then to develop this wise relationship to it and the only wise relationship is is to work with things as they are so you know uh with kids at home you know i'll, I'll i, I want to share something we, we were talking a little bit before this this video um so mindfulness has been really helpful for me and mindfulness at, at its at its simplest is uh having a comfort with with watching your thoughts and emotion develop, not just on the cushion while you're meditating, but off the cushion while you're living life. So uh, what I recognized uh, about 20 years ago was that um, there were times when I was working or times when I was just sitting by myself where an emotion would come up or a, a worry would come up and I would go, I don't wanna think about that. I just gotta push that away. And I was always the least comfortable when I was trying to push those things away. And then I developed a, a, a mindfulness practice and over time, it built more and more capacity. And that capacity grows in direct proportion to every time that intensity comes up. And instead of pushing it away, I go, ah, this is the way things are. And, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do something with this. I you know, I, I feel this anger and instead of saying, I'm not an angry person, I'm not going to be angry. I go, ah, oh, there's anger. I feel that. I see that. I realize that, that this awareness that feels and sees the anger is, is who I really am. If, right. if I, you know, depending on the belief that we subscribe to, if I, if I have to say, you know, who's my authentic, you know, uh, self that's not distracted. It's the one that's watching this anger. So that, you know, in, in Western culture, we say, I'm angry. You know, even in our language, we identify ourselves with these transitory emotional states when in fact, we're actually watching them. So the more I can watch it and say, yeah, yeah, I, I feel that I see that angry thought. And instead of resisting it, you know, for me, I ask these four questions. I say, you know, where is it in the body? You know, and I bring it into the body and I, I move through this process. Um, so whatever has happened during the, during the previous, you know, little over a year, um, I try to relate to it in that way. And sometimes I get wrong. You know, sometimes I get, I get angry. You know, there've been so many situations that have come up where I've just given myself to, whether it's something that I've read or some interaction with a, one of my neighbors who I want to keep peaceful, good relationships with, but you know, things are volatile. Uh, all the way into my little family unit here, I've got a, a son who's eight and another who's twelve. And as you can imagine, if you know kids who are eight and twelve, they're going through developmental changes. It can be hard sometimes to remember that that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> but you know, at nighttime we developed this practice, and we didn't always meditate together. Uh, but we developed a practice of meditating together, uh, for five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And, and we do it every night. It was a commitment. It started out as a, as a little chat, a 30 day challenge for us. Um, but, uh, we made it a commitment. I certainly love that they've committed to this. I wish that I had had a practice like this, that I started when I was that young. Yeah. And so, so I always want to say, yes, you know, I don't ever want to miss that commitment, no matter how I might feel. And sometimes, you know, how is this working for us? Sometimes, you know, two little boys, eight and 12, they'll be wrestling, you know, it's, it's bedtime. 
and they'll be wrestling and I'll, I'll guys stop wrestling. You were just supposed to brush your teeth and you were supposed to get your jammies on. And I'm feeling short because I have to go back and do a little bit of work once I get you guys in bed. And I don't always feel like sitting down for five minutes with them. You know, sometimes I, I just want to say, guys, it's just time go to bed. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> and and keeping this just this commitment at one point during the day for five minutes mm -hmm. sitting with them, it forces me to 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 be with what is, I mean, you know, like, yes, I am a parent and I am peevish right now. I'm angry right now. And I just want them to go to bed, but I'm going to sit with this. I'm not going to resist it. And I'm going to watch it right now. Cause now is the time that I've set aside to watch it. And, uh, you know, it's worked, it's worked well. And it's just a matter of, of breathing and watching these thoughts come and go and, and this commitment to coming back to the breath. It's very simple and it's not mysterious and it's not, you know, there's nobody sitting in a cave, you know, for, for 16 years where, where I am, you know, but, but there's a workability to these simple solutions. And, and I think, you know, Kathleen, you know, you and I probably both should, the consistency yeah, um, that's really, it's the right? key. And especially starting when you're 8 and 12, what a gift for your children. What a gift for your children. I wish I had had this when I was 8 or 12 or 20. <laughs> so, well, if yeah. I can, Jeff mentioned something really important. So, Kathy, your kids are older, but during most of COVID, you were working in a COVID area. So how did you manage your own resistance and theirs? Um, you had one child who didn't get to see their graduation, which a lot of parents have talked about, living back at home. Um, yeah. Your husband has a stressful job in the Corrections uh, Institute. Yeah. So how was staying mindful and managing resistance going for you? It was, it was fascinating when you look back at it, and scary as all get out when you walked through it. And I'm happy that I had the practice that I had Although I have to say the daily practice kind of went out the window in the early days. When, mm -hmm. I, when I changed from being a medical director of integrative medicine to working a frontline fever clinic for COVID, kind of a big switch and totally up to the challenge. I love a good challenge, but when you have a different challenge every day, when you don't know what you're doing the next day, I'll tell you, I, I, can, I can see a point where I was opening a new fever clinic in a different location. And I didn't know who was gonna be on the other side of the door. And it all depends on your team, right? Whether you're safe or not. And I walked in the door and this woman who I adore opened the door and I didn't know she was gonna be there. And I know she's good and I know she's safe and I know she's smart. And I was like, this is all about the people. It just struck me in the middle of the forehead. This is all about the people and if I just sit back and make sure that I'm open to the people around me, that's at home too. My children, all three of them at their graduations, high school, graduate school, and, and college, they all picked up the pieces. Everybody started making dinner one night because I was contaminated when I came home. So just standing mm -hmm. back, being able to appreciate the people and being very mindful that everybody's struggling. We all have different struggles. We all had different approaches to this pandemic, but Every single person from the eight-year-old to the five-year-old to the 99-year-old has their own piece of this. And to be able to step back and say, all right, I'll do more change, but let's hope there's good people on the other end of the change. And that's when I knew that I had to bump my practice up even further. So it was about probably, I don't know, June or July after just like putting my head down and barreling through that I was able to kind of step back a little bit and enhance my practice in that way. Fascinating, a real year of learning. So I wanna be sensitive to our time. Some of the things we had promised people is that we would keep our conversation short, but there's two things I'm hearing from both of you and hopefully I've heard them correctly. Um, and I think I would suggest to anybody listening that one of the things to do to get this started is to invite other people who are living closely with you. If they're not in the same house, but they're in your bubble um, to a shared project. Um, and it requires being a little bit vulnerable that you want to make the experience is what it is right now, right? We can't change that. 
but maybe I can change the way I experience it and I'd like to invite you to partner with me on it. So, you know, a family project of a 30-day commitment, right, to doing five minutes of mindfulness. And trust me, I, I had three brothers. I would have wrestled on any given day of the week versus sat quietly. So I get that part easily. Um, but I do think that's part of the key here. The other part of the key that we're hearing is some things that worked really well before can continue to work, but we've got to be okay that a new time might call for a new practice and that it would be okay to reach out to people and ask for different information. So one of the things I'm gonna to wanna to make sure we do at the end of this one, you'll see a slide come up, and it's gonna to talk to you about where you can go as Trinity colleagues using uh, Live Your Whole Life. There are two minute meditations and let's say inspirational thoughts for the day. And I know some parents are playing those with their teenagers getting ready to leave and they ground around that. So you don't have to worry about creating yourself. There's some tools. And Jeff will share some steps with us that we'll put up as well. So I want to thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Kathy, and for all our working parents at home. Um, think about everything from with your younger kids spending a few minutes coloring to a mindful practice to a gratitude practice, something that brings you together and helps all the flying thoughts in everybody's head kind of settle down for a part of the day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tim and Jeff. Thanks, Kathleen and Tim.